Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with some more old world goodness. And we have a very special one for you guys here today. One of the first and most epic miniatures that was shown off for the return of the old world was of course Lady Elise Ducard, a fantastic named character damsel for the Bretonians riding atop a stunning new unicorn sculpt. Now, they teased us with this miniature a long, long time ago and she only became available to buy an order um, a couple of weeks ago. So as soon as she hit the website, I hit order. I was one of the lucky ones to manage to get my hands on it before it sold out. I think it's now available back in the website now. So if you do like it, you can pick it up yourself. And I got a lot of requests when I was doing my Bretonian series asking me if I would perhaps do a video on her and help you guys paint her up. And that's what I'm gonna do here today. Now, it's a very challenging miniature and I'm hopefully going to be able to guide you guys through getting this miniature painted to a nice tabletop standard without stressing yourselves out too much. Obviously, it is a beautiful white unicorn and it is a very uh, delicate, He's still powerful, but very delicate looking character on the top of it. So I'm gonna do my best to help you guys navigate getting this miniature painted. Before I get into it, I just wanna say a huge thank you to all of my patrons. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for all your continued support. If you'd like to get involved with that yourself, there's links in the description below. You get access to a private Discord server. And of course, you get an extra vlog style video from me every single day keeping you guys up to date what's happening with the channel and you guys can also help guide what kind of content you want to see. So if you want to be a bigger part of the channel, that's the best way to do it. Okay, without further ado, let's get painting Lady Elise. So this is of course the beautiful Lady Elise Ducard model. She is an incredible piece. It is fairly easy if you wish to leave her off for uh, the painting. In, literally the entire two models are two separate pieces and it would be a very easy thing to do. I stubbornly glued the whole thing together and painted it as one piece to indicate how easy it would be to do that. Was that a good idea? Uh, maybe not, but I did it anyway. So let's see how this goes. So obviously a model like this was actually quite a difficult thing to start. I felt a little lost right from the beginning and it did take me a few minutes of pondering to make a decision. And I decided to grab some skeleton whore. Now, a lot of the contrast that I use to get the base coats on this miniature are watered down just a little bit. So they're about 50-50 water to the, sh the uh, contrast because I didn't want any really overpowering strong colors. She is a very kind of subtle miniature if that makes sense. All of her colors are very subtle. There's no real like solid block color to her. And I thought the best way to do that was to, like I said, thin the shades down a little bit or the contrast down. So Skeleton Horde was used and I applied this of course all around the the kind of um, laurel wreath that runs around the front of the unicorn and then I decided to use this color to block in her dress as well now traditionally she does have like this kind of like off-whitey creamy dress I'm gonna go a little bit more drab with it I just wanted to just kind of pull her away from the unicorn just a little bit more you can obviously choose to go paler if you want to I think what I did works really well and hopefully you'll get to see that later in the video Orc Flesh was then used, and I used this as the base coat in all the leaves on the wreath. The wreath was one of those things that I wanted to focus on first, because it was an easy way to kind of get some color on the model, to like springboard myself into the, the kind of routine of painting her. Because sometimes it can get kind of, it can get a little bit stressful trying to figure out where to start on models. And I think the, the decision paralysis can kind of slow down the whole thing. So I always find starting just helps. You tend to figure it out as you go along. So if there is a part of the miniatures that you really are comfortable and you know what you're gonna do, then start there. And that's for me was this wreath. Some Volibus Pink was then used for all of the flowers itself. Nice kind of pink uh, design. Now, if you look at the floral design on the bottom of her dress there, that does eventually become pink magically through the power of my um, cinematography. And it's the same color, Volibus Pink. I realized that I hadn't done on the bottom of her dress as I was layering through. So you will see that color just jump on in a couple of stages. So. Now is the time if you are going to follow along with my video, follow us pink, those floral areas. As you can see, the, uh, obviously the floral pattern or the, the wreath is uh, starting to look really nice and it's a very simple technique. Golem and Flesh was used to base coat in all of the skin. And once again, we're going to mix it with a little bit of water. We want it to be super thin. She is a super pale character, a damsel. Kind of like an old French maiden style figure. And obviously she has both her hands and both her feet exposed as well. So make sure you find those and get those base coated in with glue and flesh as well. 
Agarose Dunes was then used for base coating in her hair. To get the first coat on her hair, we will be pulling that up to a nice blonde color, but obviously a sandy yellow color to begin with, I think is the right way to go. It is different enough from the uh, dress that I think doing this color is a, is a better uh, kind of starting point. You may be thinking, can I just use skeleton hoard on the hair? Like technically you can, but like I said, I wanted the recesses just to have a little bit more tinge of yellow. And you can see it here as it dries, it's definitely got a much tint of yellow to it as opposed to the dress does. Here is where I needed to do a little bit of research and find that like metal netting thing, which holds a crown on her head. Find out whether it was metal or not. So it is. So I did some very, very careful kind of like cross hatching with, uh, with that. And then I started to base coat in the rest of uh, her metallics. So she is, of course, carrying her, her beautiful chalice. She has her crown on top of her head. And then she has this really nice ornate kind of gold and silver belt around her waist. So after we've done the silver parts, same thing again, going to go with the gold and get those things put in. So for instance, in the, the belt of the links are the silver and then all of the kind of like little round bits are gold. So kind of uh, adds a nice flash of color to it. Obviously she's not holding a sword or there's no sword on her belt or no knife on her belt or anything like that. So having other places to place the metallics on is, is a really nice little touch. And then of course her big beautiful chalice. She has some glorious uh, water from the lady in there. And so Gargax sewer was then used to uh, base coat in the uh, staff that she carries in her right hand. The staff is a funny one because in all the previous kind of, uh, or all the, the, the the pictures they showed off of this miniature, they never really showed her from that angle where you could see what was in her other hand. It was always kind of the front view. And from the front view, the staff is completely covered by the horse's neck and the horse's body. So even me, when I was building it, finding out that she had a staff was kind of cool. So I also used Gargax Zero to get a base coat on all of the kind of dirt and gravel between the rocks on her base. Once again, it's not a really important step. It's just very quick, very easy. Usually I don't talk through what I'm going to do with the bases on the miniature. So I'll show you some steps, but fairly self-explanatory. And most people will be painting the bases differently to match in with their own armies. We're starting to get somewhere now with those base coats. Time for some Basilicanum Grey, and that's going to be for all the other rocks and the fallen down pillar that are on her base. Once again, nothing special, just a very quick, you don't need to water this down or anything like the, the bits on the model. This is just to get a nice solid coat on the gray areas, the rocky bits. I've been looking forward to this miniature for quite some time. Like I said at the beginning of this video, and since it was shown off, it's just been on my mind. So I'm very happy to be finally kind of getting through it and getting it on the shelf. With this model, I do now have all of the new released Bretonian miniatures in my collection. Once she's finished, I just have the questing night on foot left to do, and then they're all painted as well. So it's really nice getting caught up on those and getting them on the table. I really do plan on playing a couple of games with this uh, Lady Elise character and seeing how she plays, seeing if there's any nuances to her. Her, role, her rules seem kind of interesting, quite powerful at uh, getting rid of other people's spells. And then obviously she has a couple of other tricks up her sleeve with her magic items, which is pretty cool. She's also still a level three wizard, which is quite powerful. And of course a damsel. So a lot of the other damsel rules will still apply. So I got the model all blocked in with Nolan oil as well. A watered down coat of Nolan oil was applied to the entire miniature to add a little bit of definition to some parts. And then it was time to start layering the unicorn. I took out ivory tusk and trooper white. Turns out this isn't exactly what I want to do. I started with the ivory. And I did get a nice solid coat with the ivory, but I, I couldn't kind of differentiate the shadowed parts with the like higher up muscle parts. It was too much of like a stark jump. And I, I started to get a little bit panicky that um, I was kind of making a mess of this model. And obviously it's quite a lot of surface to uh, use the ivory with. And like I said, I, after I got it all applied, I was a bit nervous. And then I decided to try something to try and save the job that I'd done on the, the skin, because like I said, I wasn't that happy with it. And what I decided to do is grab the Soul Blight Grey shade. Now, if you don't know that shade, it's one of the newer shades that have come out with Games Workshop when they did their kind of new batch of contrast and they added in a few extra shades and stuff uh, like a year and a half ago, two years ago. 
Soul Black Grey was one of the new paints they added and it's actually really good. It's what I, I used to base coat in all of my Pegasus Knights. And I thought this might save the day for me. So I used this and applied this all over the unicorn very sparingly. So I applied quite a heavy coat and I made sure to remove the excess so it didn't pool anywhere I didn't want to. I didn't want any blotchy areas or anything like that. And as I was applying it, I had intended on then re-layering the skin afterwards or adding a really like last final highlight with that trooper white. But the result I got from applying the Soul Black Grey, I actually really liked how it looked. I think it looks really nice, really well defined. It's a really kind of striking color. So I just left it. I think that's another important step when it comes to painting. If you get to a stage and you think of a part is like looks really well, you're like, you know what? I'm happy with this. The pressures of the like painting norm is to add an edge highlight or kind of push it further. But like I said, if you're happy with it and you think it looks great, leave it. And that's exactly what I did with the skin of the unicorn or the fur or whatever you call what a horse has. I think it looks awesome. I'm kind of kind of chuffed that I decided to go with that soul black gray over the top of it. It helped define everything. You can even see like the ribs showing through on his uh, chest there. All the muscle on his arm are showing through, but the rest is still a nice pale pallid color. And I really like it. Next, I grabbed the next three colors up for the uh, kind of like khaki color from the Vampire Fang going down to the other two colors, which are the Skeleton Horde or Skeleton Legion and Dragon Fang. So those are the three colors. I've played with those colors a lot when it comes to the Tooth and Coats Rage. And they are absolutely fantastic at um, highlighting up those kind of khaki to almost white colors which i think is a perfect scheme for uh, her dress now a lot of people won't have access to two thin coats or haven't bought into that range of paints yet or never intend to and that's totally fine and if you want to follow along with this tutorial using uh, those colors there's going to be links down below to a conversion guide which will translate those colors directly into games workshop paints so you can just use your standard games workshop paints if that's what you use to follow along I have access to these paints and I'm quite partial to them, so I will be using them every now and again. Especially on a model where I feel slightly challenged like this, I'll tend to uh, use them as a little bit of a crutch because they just give such good coverage, such smooth coats, which means I can attack things like her dress, for instance, with three coats after it has been base coated and shaded and just add that really nice bit of definition to it and make it pop. It was at this point where I started to feel a little bit more confident. I had gotten the unicorn's fur, I'm gonna say fur again, to the stage that I wanted to. And then obviously her dress was uh, looking really sweet as well. So now it's time to start just building up the other colors very quick. War Boss Green will be the first coat to highlight all of the leaves that are dangling down from that wreath area. Like I said, not crazy detail. Not going mental on this. Everybody knows how to highlight a leaf. It's a pretty standard thing. We're going to go for War Boss. And then we're going to even jump up higher and go for Scar Snake just to uh, bring it more towards that kind of pale color scheme. So it's not so kind of stark and screaming out at you. I've done a video before talking about tones and how important it is to have tones match across an army with different models. I was talking about it with my Tonian horses, them being like each horse being a different color. But if they're the same tone, you can sit them next to each other and they look great. That also, of course, applies when it comes to different colors on the same model. If we had a big like electric blue or like a like really bright kind of uh, toxic green leaves on top of that horse, it's going to look ridiculous. So you got to make sure you get the right tone of green to sit with the wood, to sit with the pink flowers, to sit with the unicorn's fur and have it all match together. That's why I jumped up to Pink Horror for the leaves and the flowers. Like I said, it's not crazy vibrant and it blends in really nicely with the wreath. And I'll pull all those colors together. Once again, we're going to pull that same color across and highlight up her dress. All those leaf motifs on her dress. And that being the same tone as the dress means that even though you're putting like, you know, a khaki tan color next to a bright and vibrant pink, they're still going to sit together really well and it's going to look fantastic. So. Trust the process, I promise. It'll look great at the end. And here I am highlighting the, uh, the dress. And as you can see, I'm focusing on the more raised areas. It is a very fancy dress. I suppose befits her rank as a high-level damsel in a Bretonian army. So 
So with that all done and dusted, we're kind of coming into the end game now. There's just a couple of bits and pieces now that we need to kind of sharpen up or add a little bit of extra color or contrast to. So the first one is, of course, her skin. Now, she is a very fair lady. So we're going to start with some dwarf skin and then we're going to highlight all of her face. Now, we are going to go for a very careful, I'm using a very fine tip brush, all of her high cheekbones, tip of her nose, eyebrows, you know, pointy chin or down her, her long neck. Her neck is obviously looking up and to the side. So you can see like her windpipe showing through and it's a, it's a very like stark thing. It's very easy to highlight and it's something you do want to overemphasize. And then of course, making sure you don't miss her hands or her feet that are on show. And then of course, we're gonna jump up to elf flesh and do exactly the same thing, but just a little bit less. So for instance, if the first highlight was two thirds up her nose down to the tip, this one is gonna be a third of the way down her nose to the tip, the very tip of the cheekbones, the very tip of the, the, the chin and uh, stuff like that. And obviously she was very pale at this point, although I was very happy with the highlights, the color didn't jump out at me too much. So what I decided to do was grab some Berserker Bloodshade and mix it with water again, just so it's, it's a very thin consistency. It's kind of like a glaze. Catachan Flesh was used. It was a very quick highlight for her wooden stave, her magic wand or whatever you want to call it. There wasn't really much else to do with that. So yeah, it was just a two second job to highlight the wood down. Obviously there's gold and silver designs on the, the, the end and then a kind of a glowing orb uh, at the top. Kind of reminds me of like a miniature like Radagast staff from Lord of the Rings. Pretty cool. Starting to come together now. Cerberus Brown is one I've never used before. This is the first time using it, but I decided to use it to highlight her hair and bring it up into that kind of blonde tone, which is what I was really after. Like I said, following the strands, it's a very well sculpted miniature, so it's very easy to pick out where the highlights are supposed to go and get that done. I understand that this video is a little bit longer than my traditional videos, but I, I honestly couldn't cut it down anymore. If I wanted to give you guys, you know, a, a video or a tutorial that you guys could actually follow and learn a few bits and pieces from so that when you got your lady Elise, you would feel confident enough to jump on board and get her painted. If I cut it down to my normal kind of between eight and 12 minutes, I would have had to cut out so many useful bits, I think. And that would have been quite sad. So hopefully guys, you will forgive me for a slightly longer video. Okay, try and figure out what is left on this fine miniature now. We've got things like the metallics to highlight. Like I said, I've got to add that rosiness to her skin. But we're going to start with the metallics. So Iron Breaker is brought out and we're going to use this to highlight all the gold and all the silver parts of the miniature. As you can see, I'm just doing little touch highlights. We'll make all those metallics pop off the model and come screaming. Now, she does have quite a few bits and pieces on that. Like I said, there's the very end of her staff around her waist, her chalice, and of course her circlet and crown clearly some sort of royalty and then obviously uh the weave going through her hair as well if you want to take very carefully highlight that you can if you just leave it the lead belt you're washed no one's gonna really notice too much it's okay i played around with the idea of filling the chalice up with something some sort of resin to make it look like it's holding water and i still may go back and do that but for right now i'm just going to leave it the standard gold Here's where I came in with that Berserker Bloodshed. Like I said, I thought the her face was just a little bit too pale. So after I added that kind of rosiness back into her, I also used it on the horse itself. So I basically did the kind of snout of its nose, pulled a bit of rosiness into that, and then kind of its eyeball, and then around its eyes for the horse. Because obviously we're going to do the eyeballs themselves to be a slightly different color. But just so the, whole, the face didn't kind of look a bit too flat, and boring on the example that they have that the snout is a different color and around the eyes are a different colors. So I didn't just pull this out of my thin air. It was definitely the idea uh, from the example that they painted up. As you can see, playing it around the eyes as well. Helps add that nice bit of definition. After that, we're on to Talazar Blue and this is the color we are going to use for the orb inside of the staff. 
She's, of course, a very powerful wizard, so her, her magical energies are stored and used from her staff. And then, like I said, I'm actually going to use the Talazar blue as the blue to highlight the horse's eyes as well. So there's a quick coat over those. And it's going to jump out and look really, really well. Taking my time not to hit any of the horse with that. Obviously, it's quite an important step. And uh, we do not want to tint the horse a blue color. With that done, we are pretty much there. We have our finished Lady Elise Ducard miniature. I've added a bunch of uh, little grass tilts and flowers and stuff to make her blend in with the rest of the army. I'm really pleased with how she came out. I was super nervous for about the first 40% of painting her, thinking that I was doing a really bad job and I didn't know how to save her. But I guess I did in the end. I'm quite pleased with the result. I hope you guys are as well. I've got a bunch of uh, funky high-res pictures that I took of her on the tabletop so you'll see what she will actually looks like storming around a battlefield obviously it's quite harsh looking at her super close up under a camera when I'm painting her but this is what she will actually look like to other, anyone else who's looking at her across the table and I must say that I'm very pleased with that and yeah, more than happy to put her on the table and claim her as my own and use her in some games so hope you guys liked her okay guys and there we have it Lady Elise is now painted up and ready to join my fully painted shelf of my Bretonians. This model, like I said at the beginning, I was wondering, was it gonna be challenging? Yes, I'm not gonna be beat around the bush here, guys. It is quite a tricky miniature to get right. Um, I did use a couple of tips and tricks, but those tips and tricks, even some of them, weren't planned at the beginning of my painting process. I got to certain points in the miniature and I was like, okay, you know what? I don't like how this is looking. I'm gonna, gonna change tilter a little bit and I'm gonna try this and, and thankfully I think it worked out and it looks really nice now. I'm happy with the final result. The journey to get there was a little bit stressful. Hopefully you guys will have learned a few bits and pieces throughout this video and you'll feel more comfortable painting up Lady Elise yourself and adding her to your army. So hopefully the video did help. If it did, make sure you give it a like. Ask me any questions you want in the comments below. I will get back to as many people as possible. I get back to everybody, but hopefully I can be helpful in the comment section as well. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on all future uploads. I have a lot more old world content to be delivering to you guys. If I could, I would do this as an entirely old world channel. I love it that much. Okay guys, thank you so much for sticking around at the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.